This story was about a group of extraordinary people who possessed different powers. The story started when a girl named Sakura was on the bus and saw something burning in a blue flame. She also saw a man who stood in the middle of the flames. She immediately got off the bus and quickly went down to check it when she suddenly bumped into a policeman. They both went to the area where she saw the strange blue flames. When they arrived at the place, they did not see anything there nor any signs of fire. There was nothing like what she described so the police told her that it might just be her hallucination. The next day, when she went to school with her friend, she saw their teacher together with another student. Sakura was surprised because the student was the guy she saw the other night. This guy introduced himself as Agami and he was their new classmate. While Agami was talking to their other classmates, Sakura approached him and asked him to come with her to talk. All the students were surprised by her words and the news spread throughout the school that Sakura would confess her love to the new student. When they went outside, Sakura asked Agami where he was and what he was doing the other night. Agami just replied that he was at work. So Sakura demanded him to take off his glove because she wanted to see what was hidden under it for there might be a sign of burn from what happened the other night. Agami immediately took it off and Sakura was surprised because there was no sign of burn or any injury. She was embarrassed and apologized to Agami for mistaking him of someone. After their conversation, the other students thought that Sakura was rejected by him. The boys who admired her were shocked when the news spread. Because of this, Agami became popular in school especially that he was good at playing basketball. But Sakura had not given up on knowing the truth yet. She secretly observed Agami's movements and followed him everywhere. When her friend Abba talked to her about her strange behavior, Agami got lost from her sight since he already knew that Sakura was following him. Sakura returned to the place where she saw the incident the other night. She was thinking that the culprit would definitely return. Then she saw a dog and feed it with onigiri. But when she tried to touch the dog, it suddenly ran away and seemed scared. It ran towards Agami who just came there and tamed the dog by patting its head. Agami informed her that this dog was owned by a homeless old man who was killed by a group called G Falcon. While they were talking about the old man, he somehow remembered his old friend. After their class, Abba asked Agami to go karaoke but he refused because he still had work to do. As he walked away, someone called him and he was given another mission. The person on the other line also asked him about his plans on Sakura who witnessed what he did the other night. Then he replied that he would kill her soon. Meanwhile, Sakura went back to the park to give food to the dog again. Then she heard a voice calling for help. It was from a man who was being beaten by a group of men. Sakura immediately went to him and tried to frighten the offenders by telling them that she already called the police. But they just laughed at her. These men were members of G Falcon and they know that the police would not do anything to seize them. And these made them feel complacent. It turned out that these people were looking for their other comrades who disappeared in the same area. Upon knowing this, Sakura immediately asked for some details and the leader thought that she might know something so he ordered his men to surround her. One of them put its hand on her shoulder, but because she knew how to fight she defended herself. The other members rushed at her at the same time, so she knocked them down one by one. They could not get hold of her so they used a taser to electrocute Sakura. She immediately fell down and the men simultaneously kicked her. Suddenly the dog rushed to help Sakura and bit one of these men. But the man just kicked the dog Sakura stood up and tried to protect the dog but they kicked her again. The men were about to beat Sakura when Agami suddenly appeared and checked on the dog's condition. They all looked at him while Sakura begged Agami to immediately take the dog to the nearest veterinary hospital. But Agami already knew that the dog had suffered too much from its injuries, and its life wouldn't last long, even if it was taken to the hospital. So he decided to kill it, so it would not suffer anymore. A man approached him, then Agami grabbed his face and released a blue flame. The flame was so strong that this man burned into ashes and disappeared. Agami's other companions felt this power, for they also possessed unique abilities. The other G Falcon members rushed at Agami but they too were punished by this power and were burned to death. Sakura was stunned by what she witnessed, then Agami approached her and placed his hand on her terrified face. The next day, Sakura woke up in her room and remembered the incident. She immediately ran to their kitchen where his father and mother were preparing their meal. Her parents were very happy to see her well. She was told that they found her in the front gate unconscious. 
but they did not know who brought her home. While walking to school, she decided to check the area where it happened but did not see any trace of the incident. When she got to their room, she saw Agami sitting and reading a book. He looked at her and just smiled. Since then, she could not take her eyes off of him and was asking herself what could be Agami's plan on her. Then her friend caught her attention. She was about to tell Abba about what happened to her, when Agami suddenly spoke. He put his hand on Abba's shoulder giving Sakura a warning sign that if she told someone about what she witnessed, something bad would happen especially to her friend. Fearing for her friend's safety, she advised Abba not to get close nor touch Agami. Their classmates were shocked of what they heard and thought that there was a love triangle going on. Agami was always watching over Sakura and for this reason, Sakura started to avoid Abba. She was worried that she might drag her in danger. Because of what Sakura was doing, Abba misunderstood this and sadly left her. This made Sakura angry and could not hold back anymore so she spoke to Agami. She told him that she wanted them to go home together after school because she would say something to him. Their classmates were shocked again because they all thought that Sakura was being aggressive towards Agami while Abba was confused by Sakura's actions. After class, they went home together. While in the middle of the crowd, Sakura tried to make him confess about the incident but she was shocked that Agami easily confirmed this to her. He told her that he was just doing his job and the G Falcon deserved it because of their illegal activities. But Sakura insisted that she could not agree on how he punished them even for those reasons. So Agami grabbed on Sakura's face and was about to burn her but Sakura avoided it using her bag. She got scared and immediately ran but Agami caught her. He acted like he was about to set Sakura on fire again but he told her that he was only teasing her. This time Agami told Sakura who they were and what they do as codebreakers. He said that it was their job to finish off the bad people who could not be punished by the law. They both agreed to watch out each other because Sakura did not want Agami to kill someone again while Agami did not want Sakura to tell someone else about him. After the deal with her, a woman called Agami and asked about Sakura. Agami told her that he decided not to kill Sakura because she was strange. He added that she was not affected by his power. Meanwhile, the two members of the Codebreakers met. This was the number three Yuki and the former number one and the strongest of them, named Hitomi. It was Yuki's mission to catch Hitomi but it managed to escape from him. One day, Agami went to Sakura's house and told her that he wanted them to go to school together. As they were walking to their room, one of their schoolmates challenged Agami on a duel. When Sakura noticed that Agami was raising his hand as if he was going to use his power, she got in between and stopped the guy from attacking Agami. She warned them saying that whoever planned to harm Agami should come to her instead. The students were thrilled and admired Sakura for their wrong assumption. Sakura was always following and observing all of Agami's movements. While walking they met Fujiwara. His eyes showed when he took off his glasses. When Agami saw them, he suddenly remembered someone and grabbed its face which worried Sakura. But Agami just patted its head and told him that he mistook him for his acquaintance because of the color of his eyes. After class, Agami received a call for his mission. But he noticed Sakura who's keeping an eye on him. She showed up and told him that she wanted to come along. Agami warned her that she would never experience a normal life again if she continued following him and once she witnessed more from his missions. It turned out that Agami's destination was a Yakuza office which was also connected to the G Falcon members that Agami eliminated the other day. There were even two policemen, and one of them was about to shoot Sakura. But Agami released his blue flames and started to kill his targets one by one. While Sakura just watched and could not do anything. After Agami finished his targets, they found the victims in a room. When Agami came down, there was a police officer waiting in a car who was also a colleague of the two police officers he burned. It suddenly dropped away when he found out that Agami was a codebreaker. Agami chased the car then suddenly the codebreaker number 4, named Toki, appeared and ended the mission using his power. After what happened that night, Sakura woke up again in front of their house. The next day, when Sakura came out of their house, she saw a man waiting for her. It was Toki who was with Agami the other night during their mission. Sakura also noticed his eyes that resembled Fujiwara's. Toki told her that he would be taking her to school instead of Agami. While walking they talked about Agami and Sakura found a puppy who did not like Toki. Then Toki said he was going to tell her something about Agami so they sat down in the park. 
Before he could reveal anything to her, Agami showed up. The two of them fought because they did not like each other but Sakura stopped them so Toki left for the meantime. Agami and Sakura went to school together and when they arrived at the gate, they saw Heike having his coffee. He and Sakura knew each other because he was also a student in the same school but she did not know that Heike was also a codebreaker. While in the middle of the class, Sakura saw Toki walking in their school. So she pretended to be sick and went out to go to Toki. Sakura was surprised to see the logo of a famous school on his uniform. And because of this, he was allowed by their teacher to join their class. After class, the three of them went to the rooftop to talk but Heike was there again and Fujiwara was with him. Toki was surprised to see Fujiwara so he immediately left. On their way home, they saw Toki in front of the big house. He told them that he would do the next mission with Agami in the area. Toki destroyed the gate and they entered. But there were guards on the entrance of the house. Agami and Toki fought them but Sakura stopped him from his attack. Suddenly, a tornado appeared and turned the guards into stones. When the door opened, two men came out who also had special abilities. They fought with Agami and Toki but when the container behind them lost its power, they immediately went back inside the mansion. They entered the house and saw children lying on the beds. These children also had special abilities and were subjected to experiments. While they were looking for their target, the dog that Sakura kept, smelled something down the stairs so they went to check on it. When they entered the room, they saw beds which were full of blood and seemed a lot of torture happened in there. Then the light turned on and the owner of the facility and its assistant who were conducting experiments appeared. The two men they fought earlier also showed up. They fought again and then they found out that the contents of the containers behind the two men were also children. They realized that these kids were the ones that gave them powers. Agami and Toki had enough and immediately finished off these men. When Agami was about to burn the owner of the facility, a girl in a wheelchair came. She was the owner's sick daughter. He told them that he was doing all these to save his daughter's life. But Agami told him that he was still a killer. And when Agami was about to finish him, Sakura suddenly punched the guy. The man tried to attack but when Agami grabbed him, he set him on fire. The girl threw the book at Agami and was angry at him because of what he had done to her father. In her anger, she attacked Agami using her ability but due to her weak body she lost consciousness. On the order of the Prime Minister, the authorities took the children from the facility. The next day, Toki went to see the Prime Minister who was also his father. They had a little conversation about his sister Fujiwara. While Agami and Sakura were walking, they met the codebreaker number 5, named Oji. He told Agami that there was an order from Eden that he should watch over Sakura. When they got to their room, they saw that their classmates were doing something. Abba informed Sakura about the plan of the whole class through a letter. And since they kept their conversation secret, Agami thought that Sakura would tell Abba about him and his secret missions. When Agami was about to get his bag before going home, Sakura blocked him from entering the room. But she still could not stop him so when Agami opened the door, his classmates surprised him by throwing him a welcome party. After the event, they went on the rooftop of the school, Agami read the letters of his classmates for him. When he was about to burn the papers, Sakura immediately grabbed it because she thought that Agami did not appreciate the efforts of their classmates. But Agami told her that he remembered it all and that he would not forget the contents of the letters. As they were going down the stairs, Agami saw a group of people outside the school gate who forced themselves to get in. Agami and Sakura immediately went there. He already suspected that Hitomi, the former codebreaker number one, was the one who did this. Hitomi's special ability was to control electricity and that he could even control the bodies of dead people like puppets. Agami fought them but due to excessive use of his power, it weakened him. Their teacher, who was Miss Kanda, came and helped them. Other opponents intended to go inside the building so Agami quickly blocked them with his fire. As he continued to fight, he used more of his power and it weakened him again. Two code breakers came. Yuki helped Agami while Heike also used his power on other opponents. Agami lost consciousness after they defeated the enemies. They let Agami rest in a room and they also told Sakura other information about the codebreakers. They had a hunch that Hitomi might already knew where Agami lived. Because they were worried about Agami's condition, Sakura suggested to bring him at her place. 
When they arrived at her house, they also found Toki there in his child form. This happened to him because he was in his lost condition and this condition was also what Agami was currently going through. Heike and Toki discussed the attack in the school and they thought that Hitomi was interested in Sakura. It was also possible that he planned to force Agami to use its power to the point that he would reach this condition. While riding his bike, they called Oji and told him to go to Sakura's house. While Agami and Sakura's father were talking, somebody suddenly attacked the house. When they checked what happened, they saw Hitomi carrying Sakura who was unconscious. Agami and Yuki tried to get Sakura back but they could not do anything because of Hitomi's strength. Fortunately, Heike and other codebreakers came and they helped to get Sakura back. Agami asked Hitomi its purpose in doing this and its reason why it suddenly changed. Hitomi replied that he intended to take revenge on Eden. Agami fought him again with the sword but he was still helpless against Hitomi's strength. Even Toki's attack was no match on Hitomi's electric power. When Agami was able to use his power again, he and Toki attacked him at the same time but Hitomi was really strong that the two of them were just thrown back after a counter-attack. So Hitomi prepared a strong attack and when he aimed for the codebreakers, Sakura blocked it but she was not hurt at all. Then they found out that the place of the Prime Minister was under attack and Hitomi's ally, named Yukihina, easily got him as hostage. And this time, Hitomi also left the area. Toki pretending to go somewhere else but he was actually worried about his little brother so he quickly went to him and fortunately Fujiwara was fine. They talked about what happened then Sakura found out about Hitomi. Meanwhile, Agami heard the conversation of Sakura's parents in their room. And when they left, Agami came in and saw Sakura's pictures. She looked strange in the pictures, like someone who's angry at the camera. Sakura caught him checking the pictures on her album. Agami wondered about something so they talked about the strange way on how they were holding their hands in the pictures. Agami went out the house, then Sakura's father saw him and invited him to talk. Together with his wife, they talked about Sakura and they told him that she was not their real daughter. They said they just saw her in front of their gate looking pitiful and bloody. They want Sakura to live a normal life but they were worried that the tragedies she experienced may happen to her again. Because of what they witnessed, the couple realized that they could not avoid it either, so they begged Agami to protect Sakura. After that, the five codebreakers decided to go on separate ways to find the Prime Minister and Hitomi. They started searching. Agami was with Sakura while Miss Kanda called their other colleagues to investigate about what happened specifically to Sakura's past. Oji and Heike met at the bridge. Oji suspected that Heike had something to do about the abduction of the Prime Minister. He was alerted when Heike confirmed his suspicions. When Heike used his power, something exploded on the bridge where they were standing. But just a few seconds later, another building exploded near it. While Oji was trying to stop the structure from falling due to the explosion, Heike attacked him. Yuki saw from afar what Heike did to Oji. While Sakura was walking, she heard the sound of a fireman's siren. She met Heike and he told her that Agami was looking for her. He asked Sakura to come for he would bring her to Agami. When they arrived at the place where she saw many wall clocks while the Prime Minister tied up on a chair. She was surprised when she also saw Hitomi talking to Heike who was told that he might be included in their group because he was able to bring Sakura to him. This made Sakura realize that Heike had betrayed them. She also found out that Heike and Agami were studying at her school to watch over her on the orders of the Prime Minister and Heike was the only one who knew about it. They did this because they knew that she would be an obstacle to Hitomi's plans. Sakura asked him why he was doing this and he replied that it was to help the codebreakers. Kanda and Agami receive information from an unknown person about Hitomi's location. Kanda immediately went there but Hitomi found out so he ordered Heike to seize her. Sakura's mother called Agami and told him that she had not come home yet. Agami told her that he had an idea where he could possibly find Sakura. Yuki came and told Agami about Heike's betrayal. When Agami heard this, they immediately went to the place where Hitomi was hiding. As they entered the building, Heike was there and immediately attacked them. They fought Heike, then Yuki decided to let Agami go ahead and leave the fight to him. When Agami got to the top floor, he saw Kanda who pointed its gun at him. He immediately noticed that she was being controlled by Hitomi's power. Then Hitomi appeared to him and he also saw Sakura bounded and lying on the floor. 
Agami released his power and was about to approach Hitomi but Kanda blocked him. Agami wanted Kanda to use up the bullets on him since he could use his fire to block them. But Hitomi said that he would fire the last bullet on Kanda's head. Agami rushed at Kanda who continued to fire until she pointed the gun at her head. When Agami was close to Kanda, Sakura was able to get away and grabbed Kanda causing Hitomi's power that was control her to disappear. At that moment, Hitomi explained the meaning of the old clocks on the wall. These were the exact time of deaths of the former codebreakers. Since the codebreakers were vigilantes, almost no one knew them anymore. This was the reason why they could not be given a formal burial after death, so Hitomi did this for them. So he wanted to take revenge on the Prime Minister because he was responsible for everything. As they continued to talk, the bombs Hitomi planted in different buildings exploded one by one. Hitomi did this to fill people with fear and made them wish that someone would end up the chaos. Through this, the people might notice the codebreakers. Agami agreed with this, especially since he did not want to be controlled by the Eden for the rest of his life, but he still did not agree with Hitomi's plans in involving those innocent people. They were about to fight but Yukihina stopped it with its power. Then Yukihina tried to kill Sakura, fortunately, Toki came to save her. Hitomi and Yukihina left with the Prime Minister and Sakura chased after them. Heike left when the bombs started to explode one by one in the building. Sakura went with Hitomi's group to make sure that they would not kill the Prime Minister. Hitomi's past was shown since he entered as a codebreaker when he was 16 years old. He started as number 6 and was able to do all the missions well. Until the other codebreakers who were with him died one by one in their missions. When he was made number 1, he noticed something different from the other codebreakers who died not because of the missions but because of their own power. So he begged Heike to find out about this and if Eden had something to do with it. Since he was said to be the number one, he would make sure that there were no codebreakers who would end up like this under his leadership. Then the new generation of codebreakers was formed with the new members Yuki, Toki, Oji and Agami. One day, they received news that the person who murdered the former codebreakers had returned. They immediately conducted an operation to eliminate the group and Hitomi easily defeated the leader. Heike, on the other hand, showed the result of his investigation about the fallen codebreakers due to their own abilities. Hitomi found out that this happened when a codebreaker is lost, causing them to not be able to control their own abilities. The Eden also knew this and they call it Code End. Hitomi was depressed because he thought he had formed the perfect group of codebreakers but this so-called Code End was the only thing that could possibly ruin their lives. Hitomi called Agami to ask him to come with him but he thought that Agami's life might be in danger because Eden would surely to kill him and the other codebreakers. So he decided to do the mission on his own and kept the information about the code end to himself. The next day Agami received a call from Kanda that Hitomi attacked the Prime Minister and from then on he was considered an enemy of Eden. When they reached the location, they hung Sakura and tied the Prime Minister on the top of the building. Hitomi announced to the entire country that he was going to assassinate the Prime Minister and at the same time many people would die because of the bombs placed in different parts of the country. Another bomb exploded in the city so Yuki tried to find out the exact locations of the bombs through his ability. He was surprised to discover that there were too many of them. They also all received the bomb locations from someone they could not identify. They found out the Prime Minister's exact location so Toki and Kanda decided to go there while Yuki stayed behind to stop other bombs he could find. While Hitomi and Heike were talking, they saw from the CCTV that Agami had entered the building. Heike intended to go there but Hitomi wanted to be the one to face him because he wanted to see Agami's full power. When Agami reached the floor where Sakura was located, Hitomi was also there waiting for him. The two of them fought but Hitomi was so strong, and Agami was struggling to fight him. Then Agami, found out that Hitomi's betrayal and the attack on the Prime Minister were all lies. Hitomi stated the truth that he just wanted to talk about something with the Prime Minister. Knowing that he would not stop, the Prime Minister ordered his staff to seize him. So Hitomi had no choice but to kill them so he could escape. He added that Eden gathered children with special abilities to be subjected to their research and those who have the ability to fight were enlisted as codebreakers. When Toki and Kanda were about to go to the top floor, Heike met them and said that he would not allow them to get there. 
Toki was pissed and got excited at the same time because if he beat Heike, he would automatically become number two. They started the fight and even though Heike's strength was extraordinary, Toki was somehow able to keep up with him. On the other hand, Yuki kept finding the bombs one by one and Sakura's family helped in searching too. Her father's group tracked down the location of the possible bomb controller and they were confronted by two children who also had special abilities. The children did not hesitate in attacking their group because it was Hitomi's order to them. Meanwhile, when Yukihina entered the building where the children with special abilities were kept, he was met by Oji who was still alive and they also fought. Agami was getting weak from Hitomi's electric attacks until he found himself in a lost state due to the overuse of his power while fighting Hitomi. He was about to finish Agami but Sakura ran to stop him. Since Sakura was immune to any special abilities, Hitomi planned to strangle her and just wait for the bomb to explode before killing her. But Hitomi wondered because the time was up and the bombs did not go off on the expected time. Heike showed up, and revealed everything that he planned to prevent Hitomi from succeeding. He ordered Yuki to go to the controller of the bombs and destroyed it. He also pretended that he defeated Oji then ordered him to fight Yukihina to give time for the evacuation of the children to keep them safe from abduction. When Yuki arrived there, Yukihina immediately left the area. Heike thought that they stopped the bombs completely, but they found out that Hitomi had another plan. Hitomi said that he could detonate the bombs with his ability through the building where they currently stand. But before he could do so, the building was surrounded by Oji's power. They fought against Hitomi but even if they fight together they could not knock him down. As he was about to use this strong power again, Sakura tried her best to stop him. He got pissed and grabbed Sakura's neck to strangle her. Suddenly, Hitomi felt strange and immediately let go of Sakura. It was from Agami who was standing behind him. When Agami removed his ring, he released a very strong power that surprised Hitomi. Even though Hitomi electrocuted him, Agami was not affected by it. Hitomi attacked again with one of his strongest attacks so the other codebreakers helped to stop it. But their powers were no match to it. It went straight to Agami but before it could get close, his fire consumed it. Hitomi released another strong attack and tried to detonate all the bombs but Agami stopped it and his fire attacked Hitomi and burned him. Both Hitomi and Agami weakened but Hitomi was able to talk to them. But just like the previous codebreakers who perished in their own power called the Code End, it was also happening to Hitomi. He tried to get up to go to the Prime Minister but Agami punched him and the two had a fight. Agami defeated him but the Code End started to torture Hitomi again. The other codebreakers got worried quickly approached him so Hitomi spoke to them. The Prime Minister suddenly appeared which angered Hitomi and was about to attack him but he was stopped by the codebreakers. Agami told him to leave the rest to them for they no longer want to see him do more evil deeds. At this moment, the code end took Hitomi's life. The Prime Minister said something that angered Toki so he punched him. While Heike and the Prime Minister were in the car, they talked about Hiki's plans that defeated Hitomi and Agami's demonstrated power. He also mentioned that they should as well prepare the seeker and suddenly he was electrocuted which surprised Heike. But despite this, he was amazed to see Hitomi's revenge on the Prime Minister. As Sakura was ready for school, she hoped that Agami would be waiting for her outside, but he was not there. Instead, Yuki came and told Sakura that Agami was still missing and if she needed help she could just call him. After Yuki left, Oji also showed up and gave her a ride. While sitting on the bench and crying, Toki suddenly came so she immediately wiped her tears. He accompanied her to the bus and Sakura said something about Agami that surprised Toki. Then the bus passed along the square where she first saw Agami so she immediately stopped the bus and ran towards it. When she arrived there, she was surprised to see the square full of flowers and happy children. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.